Welcome to Education Futures webinar, Does the Future Need Schools? I'm John Moravec. And I'm Kelly Moravec. So I'm an investigator on the future of education. Uh, my PhD is actually in international education, uh, but I have a business background. I have an MBA and stuff. So I tend to look at things often as a business problem or a marketing problem. What's this end product that we want to create? And I think this drives a lot of my education and futures thinking because I want to get to some of these big questions like, do we need schools in the first place? Mm-hmm. How about you? Um, my background is in education. I'm a teacher. Um, my EDD is in educational leadership. And as a teacher, I have a vested interest in doing what's best for our learners. All right. Very cool. So how this works. Uh, we're using Facebook Live, and this allows us to reach more people. It's not precisely live, but almost real time. So by that, what I mean is that what you see is delayed a little bit, like maybe as many few as like five seconds or as much as 30 seconds. And so the comments and questions you may see uh, may be a little bit delayed too. It's just uh, the nature of the platform. So to help mitigate this, we've structured this webinar into two parts. In this first part, we're going to share our findings and we invite you to share your comments and questions. And we'll keep track of them as they come in. And we may you know, respond in to some quick things um, as we broadcast live. Um, but in the second part, we're going to respond to your questions and comments and try to interact as live as we can or as this platform allows uh, using this the, the questions that we've collected over this first part to feed into that. And moreover, uh, we're we are recording this. So a recording of this first part will be posted online at educationfutures.com uh, as well as uh, more uh, figures and data uh, that helps share the deeper look that we took into the data that we collected. Mm -hmm. So the way for you to join in is to post your comments during the Facebook live stream, or you can text them to John at plus one, six, one, two, three, two, five, five, nine, nine, two, or connect with us via WhatsApp, same number, plus one, six, one, two, three, two, five, five, nine, nine, two. And that plus one is because we're in the United States, so some people need may need to type in 001, but that plus is just your, your international uh, access uh, uh, number code. Uh, so again, it's, it's six one, plus one, six one two, three two five five nine nine two, or just post your comments on the Facebook live stream. Um, I don't know precisely how many people have uh, pre-registered for this. I haven't looked at the list since uh, Monday. Uh, but what I did see then is that we had people from some 20 countries pre-registered. So hi to Marcel from Amsterdam, uh, Adriana in Ecuador, Fahim in Pakistan, Guadalupe in Buenos Aires, Elisabetta in Jakarta, Peter in Bratislava, Daniela in Mexico City, Derry in England. Hi. Uh, and for our friends and colleagues in Minnesota, uh, and the list just goes on and on. So thank you so much for uh, pre-registering and thanks uh, for joining us. Um, Enjoying having you today and having this conversation. Yeah. So our question was, does the future need schools? And it was designed to be a bit provocative. So as we look 10, 20, or 50 years in the future, will the idea of schools still be relevant? And we asked it, hoping it would prompt thinking around a similar question, which is, what is the purpose of education? Now, had we actually asked, what is the purpose of education? I think that we've had a very different set of responses because when we were schooled, we we're told what the purpose of education is. Uh, it could be like to create great citizens or, you know, uh, in fact, there are conference, academic conferences on these very things. But it's these ideas, I think, have kind of persisted. So I wanted to ask the question in a way that that was, you know, a little more is, is not as direct. We're going around a little bit to really connect, I think, more with uh, what some people's hearts and souls on what we're doing this for mm -hmm. and provoking and by just posing as provocative yes no question mm -hmm. does the future need schools so there was one required yes or no question does our future need schools and then there was an optional why or why not follow-up question and then voluntary industry reporting uh, this was posted as an online survey from March 1st through March 16th of 2018. Mm -hmm. And um, it was sent to everybody who is a LinkedIn contact of John's and then also both of our Facebook uh, Twitter friends, Twitter friends. Yeah. So our, our professional learning networks um, through social media. 
Yeah. And the whole idea was to generate an ecology of ideas that could be integrated into future research. Now, there's some limitations to this and there's some graces to it. Uh, this is, you know, it's an arm's reach study uh, that reached out to our social media followers. And that's OK. So I like to think of this as being more of an expert panel of people who are considered to have put some thought into these things before, um, even if just by virtue of being connected with us professionally somehow. Um, we also didn't follow standard survey protocol to allow more generalizability of a total population. But that wasn't the point of this, uh, to produce generalizable findings would have to expend you know, a considerable amount of resources uh, for a thorough and sampled investigation. And this study is really uh, an expert panel. And I also share some of my value statements on this uh, because people are connecting an Education Futures website where I say that schools in 2018 look a whole lot like schools in 1918. I'm no, I know I'm not the only person saying that, uh, but I do uh, share my values on that and that perhaps you know influences results. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But the group of respondents we had was really diverse, uh, with many experts who should be considered in any study of the future of education. Uh, we were geographically diverse. Uh, our results came in in English and Spanish. Uh, people were very candid in the responses, and many of the responses were very thoughtful. Mm -hmm. Now, if you remember, we had just one required question, which is yes, no, does the future need schools? And the why, why not was optional, but people really wrote in mm -hmm. and uh, wrote in with a really rich um, set of responses to that. So I can't wait to share. Yeah. All right. So, all right, I'm going to share some of the key data of what we learned. Kelly's going to dive in a little bit uh, deeper on the, on the details. Um, but I do want to share a reminder of how to join in. So you can post your comments during the li this uh, Facebook live stream, or you can text them to me at plus one six one two three two five five nine nine two, or you could do it WhatsApp at the same number. So, does the future need schools? Well, according to the responses we got, um, one hundred and sixty four respondents, uh, seventy one percent of them said yes, the future does need schools, and twenty nine percent said no. All right. And this was our only required question. And we had 164 respondents. And this is from March uh, 1st through the 16th mm -hmm. of earlier this year. So of those folks that said no, the 48 respondents, 4% uh, came from government, 23% uh, came from higher education, 27% from industry, 21% from K-12 education. That's that's quite interesting. 6% mm -hmm. uh, from nonprofit, and then we had some retired students and and uh, people identified as other. And I thought that was quite interesting that we have so many higher education, industry, and education respondents saying that, no, the future does not need schools. But if we look at those who say that, yes, the future does need schools, so we had 116 respondents on that. Uh, which is about 71% 71, 71 of the people that, uh, that uh, participated, 3% um, government, 29% higher education, 16% industry, 22% uh, K-12 education, 9% nonprofit, 7% retired, and then other. Now, we see growth in numbers of higher education and retired people, but we see a shrinkage in industry respondents. And interestingly, in other areas such as K-12 education, uh, they remain flat. So about the same, the same proportion of uh, teachers said yes and no uh, in both, uh, both areas. And I thought that was kind of an interesting thing to, to, uh, to note on that. Another interesting thing is that the, there's a shrinkage in industry respondents on yes. And this kind of makes sense because we hear oftentimes from people in industry that, uh, that education is not, should not be such a strong priority. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was not surprising. But we saw an increase in higher education, and that was really mm -hmm. interesting as well. Another interesting thing to point out, it looks like uh, student respondents, there were none that said, yes, we need school. Well, none of them said, yes, we need school. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, so that, that's be, uh, I think that's because we had very few student respondents. So um, I'm hesitant to say that that no no students would say that, but yeah, right. uh, in this but survey, of the ones, that, of the ones that, of those that we had, yeah, said, yeah. got it. They okay. all said no. Yep. All right. All right. So, uh, out of the 164 respondents, 161 of them went on to say more. Um, so we had 98 percent of the people that responded uh, respond also to the optional why or why not question. Um, and to us, this 
lets us know that we really had phenomenal engagement with this question uh, of whether or not the future really needs schools. Yeah, and so some key themes that emerged uh, were socialization, that's, that schools are places where you know we get together and we learn social skills. Uh, it's a place for learning, that sort of physical sense. Um, a lot of people, 12%, said that schools are just simply obsolete. Um, and 10%, they provide a structure for learning. This, that learning together is um, important at 6%. Uh, knowledge development, knowledge transfer emerges as a theme. 4% of folks said that schools are oppressive. Uh, and then a smaller proportion said that, that brought, provide foundations. Self-directed learning came in as a common theme. Uh, schools provide social economic liberation to help, uh, you know, jump out of, say, lower economic class. Um, and then a lot of people had other ideas, like schools enable younger people. Uh, schools uh, provide a base level of education for all children. Uh, some of that, you know, really focus on we need innovation models, innovative models, innovative models, innovative models. Parents need help. That schools serve as babysitters. Uh, children need to be told what to learn that schools provide citizenship education, which is when I was told what schools are about, that's what I was told about citizenship education, uh, that we need schools for the promotion of the common good, uh, that schools are just simply part of the human experience, uh, help us meet industry needs. We need schools because we have no other option uh, for per professional development uh, and uh, places uh, for technology. So Kelly, you took an even deeper dive into the data and um, let's take a look into some of that. Um, now, a more detailed version of this mind map will be published to educationfutures.com. It's going to look different, uh, but allow you to click deeper to discover more points and ideas in the study. So Kelly, what did you find? Well, there were six main themes that rose to the surface uh, among all of the text that respondents submitted, um, the first of which was uh, the current realities of school. So what do our schools right now really look like? Um, the second was the future of school. So what do we need out of schools in the future? Uh, the third was the learning environment or the where, where school should take place. The fourth was the purpose of school. So why do we have schools anyway? And then uh, stu who, who are involved in schools, so the students and the teachers. And then finally, the learning and the teaching, so the what and the how of learning. All right, so what are some of the current realities of school? Um, so th that really looked at kind of the, um, the purpose of school, uh, what school really shouldn't be, um, what outcomes we want to have for school, students' experience, and then outcomes um, or outside impacts on school, and then the positive and negative attitudes about school. So when uh, respondents talked about the purpose of school, it was really about providing that base education for all. Um, schools shouldn't be a place where memorization uh, is occurring. They shouldn't be just reading, writing, and math. Um, as far as outcomes go, they uh, schools really should give um, future opportunities uh, for learners and, and prepare students to thrive in a rapidly transforming world. Um, but uh, conservatism and conformity often lead to low outcomes. What's so, conservatism and conformity? Um, so that's really the idea that um, students, all students need to learn the same thing at the same time with the same age people, um, sort of uh, churning out... Um, this the same kind of thing it's almost like robots i guess um in this idea that that again everybody needs to learn the same thing at the same time with the same age people um further down into the the research you'll see that that uh many common commonalities in the idea of uh, students focusing in on their interests um, individualized learning um, personalized education things like that um, so which is kind of the opposite of what we have now and what uh, that conservatism and conformity lead to. Um, so as far as the future of schools go, um, school as an, institution, as an institution will become obsolete, according to some of our respondents. Um, many of our respondents suggested that schools need to change and evolve. Um, and why the need for change? Well, because... Our society and economy have changed. So what we're learning in schools needs to change too. People's yeah. needs are changing. Um, and the type of work that, that will be available when students leave school, that's changing too. 
Um, so as far as needs moving forward go, our respondents said, you know, we need to modernize education. Um, it needs to be much more innovative and um, use, you know, knowledge and technology move fast. And so we need to create approaches to to learning that are new um, to follow those changes. And then schools need to learn and evolve and collaborate in new ways with other organizations. Um, and then simply as we need to, to develop a different definition of school. All right. So about the where question as we get into learning environments. Mm hmm. Um, so learning environments as, is, is kind of the where. So as far as location goes, um, there were kind of two camps. One was, we don't need a building. School can take place remotely. And then the other was, um, well, we need a place in our communities um, where people can convene and, and get together. Um, so there was a lot of talk about online and virtual learning and mm -hmm. um, also the dangers of online and, and, and remote learning, such as, um, you know, those environments don't have that same social experience. The they, schools need to have some sort of culture that develops a community of trust and that's a safe space for everyone. It needs to provide um, equity and access for everyone. And then it also needs to provide time and context for what needs to be learned. A place where new ideas can be connected, um, learning can happen, projects can be done, um, a space where people can gather and learn together. And then, of course, the idea that you saw earlier in your research um, to socialize. All right. So what is the purpose of school and why? What did people say about that? There was one particular quote from the uh, research from one of the respondents that I thought was particularly compelling, especially because it's a question that you and I have asked lots of times, yeah. um, which is, what are we educating our young people for? Um, so as far as the purpose goes, I think that's kind of where you start. Um, there are ideas around unleashing the potential uh, in, our, in our learners so that they can contribute to their own happy lives and also mm -hmm. to the world. Um, and then also providing better opportunities for preparing students for whatever they do after school, whether that's college or some sort of technical field or the workforce. Um, it talked about the community needs, society needs, and then also global needs. So things like businesses and schools collaborating so that the communities um, can hire students for needed jobs. Um, schools are needed for common good and um, the common good of society. And then also learning and education are just basic societal needs. Um, and when we put all that together, we look at, you know, how are we going to realistically sustain our earth? Um, and then as, as far as uh, students go individually, how can, how can they learn how to assimilate into this broader society that's rapidly changing? All right, now let's get into the who question of students and teachers. Who are the students, who are the learners, the teachers, or the teacher characteristics? Yeah, so the people of school, right? right. So yeah. schools, it's a, it's a people experience. Um, school's about, about people. Mm -hmm. Um, so we look at our learners. Our learners should be people of all ages, multi-generational, um, and then small groups of interested individuals coming together. Um, students and, uh, individuals within a school, uh, and students in particular, they need encouragement, um, to be creative and to be their own unique selves. Some of them need meals, um, some we looked at um, social and emotional needs, and there's that idea of the sense of togetherness and the need mm -hmm. for human interaction. Um, their learning needs include, you know, some kids really need a structure, and um, education and knowledge they're still needed. What about the teachers? Um, so teachers, the characteristics of teachers they they need to be more of a mentor or a coach. Um, they need to do more of a consulting role. They need to um, provide guidance uh, and mentoring experience um, and then facilitate individual learning processes. So as far as teacher needs, um, they need better training or different training. Um, they need to take on those different roles um, than what they do right now. And then we really need to, as a society, invest in teachers' ability to encourage and discover and cherish uh, the talents of their individual students. Okay, so what about the, the structure of learning, the goals development, curriculum, and, you know, the, the what's and how's of learning and teaching? Yeah, so we look at, um, you know, kind of the, the what. So if we think about that in terms of what school is now, that's like the curriculum or what's being taught. And the how is sort of the format. Um, and then the structure is really the, the through, um, it's through the structure that we deliver the curriculum 
and um, have that that different format. So that all starts with goal development. Um, and the, our respondents really felt that it was important to gather all of the community to determine the goals for school. Um, and that students should have the uh, ability to develop their own goals. Um, and really the whole point of that is to kind of answer the question, well, what, what needs to be known? Uh, as far as the curriculum goes, uh, respondents said that, you know, basic training and skills, in- information, that was important. But also, um, as our societal needs change, the curriculum instruction need to change as well. Um, there's a, a strong push for digital literacy and then also adapting the curriculum to individual needs and then looking at subjects as a way to, um, to use tools to grasp the things that are happening in our world. Um, so then the format, so how we're going to deliver that um, through a diversity of approaches. We, we need um, workshops, interesting problems to solve, um, resources should be inquiry based, um, and then just developing new ways to learn and unlearn. And we can do that through, um, you know, focus on learning, not teaching. Uh, respondents talked about having no classes, no levels, no subjects, no tests, no schedules. Um, so really looking at that individualized path um, and specifically giving our students freedom and trust, um, voice, choice, agency, um, and having them really be participating in developing uh, the course structure. Um, and so if we look at that, we've got the what, we've got the how, we've got through. Um, so then we can take a, a really specific dive into, you know, how that looks, right? Mm-hmm. So individualized learning, self-directed education, um, making sure that students have their own pathways, uh, that students really are at the core of the educational experience and not the teacher. Um, and then, you know, just making sure that they have opportunities to develop their abilities according to their interests. They, we talked about social learning. Um, there were many, many respondents said that social learning and learning communities were key uh, in um, the how and what of learning and teaching. Uh, experiential learning was a theme that came up. Um, so having authentic experimentation and workshops mm-hmm. um, and making sure that their interactions and activities were really connected to the real world. Uh, often I saw um, respondents talk about play and exploration. Um, so allowing students to just gather and play freely and interact um, with one another around their common interests. Um, soft skill development was also another uh, theme that rose to the top. Um, so, you know, Things like skills like problem identification, critical thinking, um, problem solving, collaboration, creativity, communication, um, things like that. Uh, discernment was one that came, that hmm. came out. I thought that was interesting. What, is, what do you mean by that? Um, just the, the, the ability to be able to um, discern or, or um, see the subtleties in something and then using that as a way to um, make a judgment or evaluate. Um, also had some uh, uh, the theme of college and career development. So, you know, school really should be providing a solid foundation to support the professions, mm-hmm. um, relevant vocational skills. And then again, that idea of forming partnerships with businesses mm-hmm. um, and then social and emotional and life skills and needs um, came up. So, you know, students really needing to have not just the socialization or the social learning, but really learning social skills, mm-hmm. um, you know, attending to children's emotions, and then just learning the basic life skills that they'll need to be successful. And then finally, the last category that came up was evaluation. Um, so how, how do we measure this? And um, there were a lot of strong opinions, no grading, um, that students and teachers need to be co-developing the evaluations and the assessments, um, that maybe we use an experience profile instead of a diploma, um, and that it really should be focused in on competencies instead of knowledge. Okay. Thanks so much. This is a lot of stuff. And I think you did a great job organizing it. And I love this mind map uh, that was put together. So we're going to post this at educationfutures.com. It's going to have more data. So it's going to look a bit different. Uh, but you'll be able to click in through different levels to to really fork out and explore the the data that was collected and the general themes and categories that you've constructed. So right. I really only touched on a small portion of right. what we collected. All right. So I'm hoping this conversation that we're going to have in the second part that will bring all these ideas together and uh, to explore um, uh, really our next steps or where this is all re- really taking us. Yeah. Um, before we jump to the second part, though, I do want to share some other observations. 
Uh, 43%, which is 70 responses, called for a need to change or evolve uh, learning. Uh, yeah, just kind of flat out said we need to change things. Um, 13%, uh, 22 responses, uh, provided specific ideas, examples, or pathways for changing or evolving learning. And so these are people saying that, you know, I'm working on this, or we really need to do that. Um, and so I really like that, that this isn't just like, okay, we're identifying problems, but people are also working on solutions or have some solutions in mind. Mm -hmm. Now, some people thought that, I think that, that maybe things are just kind of plain hopeless. And mm -hmm. so 3% said that, uh, said, submitted some really sarcastic comments, I think. Uh, some examples are, uh, until robots are recognized as babysitters, we'll need schools. Schools are the lesser evil. And how else, other than schools, can we as a society so effectively crush creativity and train the next generation of bureaucratic leaders? Oh, <laughs> that's pretty sarcastic, and but it also made me giggle a little bit. So uh, thanks to everybody for all the responses. So as a reminder of how to join in, uh, post your comments uh, during the Facebook during this Facebook live stream, or you can text them to me at uh, plus one six one two three two five five nine nine two. You can also connect with us via WhatsApp, the same number, uh, which is plus one six one two three two five five nine nine two. And we're just about to open the question and answer period. And again, these findings and these slides are being published online at educationfutures.com. So please make sure to visit us there. Also, I, I want to put a pitch for the newsletter. If you haven't signed up for the newsletter, you can sign up at educationfutures.com as well. Uh, we're going to send everything from this out in the newsletter. And our newsletter only goes out uh, maybe once every three or four months. So that's a good thing to sign up for. Mm -hmm. So thank you for joining us. Thank you.